Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today we are going to talk about JavaScript and really behavior on running JavaScript on a web page. Well, what this means is that uh, we're going to look at the developer console and talk about how you can use it for various purposes while browsing the internet. Um, I have here a basic form from Samsung. You can sign up to receive the latest updates. Not a big deal. Uh, there are plenty of forms like this on the internet, but this one doesn't have a ton of fields and is something that uh, illustrates a point very uh, simply. So when you're browsing the internet, if you know a little bit of JavaScript, you have a superpower because when you go into developer tools and you look at your console, you can run JavaScript code that interacts with the web page as if the developer themselves are, um, are, are writing this code. So. Uh, for example, uh, very simply, console log hello world. Um, this is just like a print statement. This is just a print statement. So uh, when I click enter, it prints out hello world. Um, what's more important is that if you go console log um, and you have a document dot get get elements by class, uh, let's go by class name and see if we have any classes. Hang on one second, I'm going to take a look at what classes we might have. Let's just take a look here. Uh, this, they have class input field. Okay, so we'll go input field. I can't remember how it was. Um, input dash field. <clears throat> okay, and in theory, should be able to print a bunch of these HTML that uh, HTML elements that reference different pieces of this website. Um, we can get more granular so we can fill out the fields. So document and now uh, we'll come here inspect it. The ID is first name. Okay, um, so document dot get uh, element by ID. First name, um, and we're going to get the element here. And that's this one. And of course, you can get the email, email confirmation, last name, each of those by their ID by their class and all of that. Now, um, what I wanted to talk about very quickly is if you wanted to automate this, you can write code here. But one of the real challenges is if you want to fill out a form multiple times. So I, I pulled up this one randomly, but there is another uh, form that I wanted to fill out under different names, under different people in my household. And essentially, I would have, you know, my first name is Anson, and then uh, somebody else's name, let's say Joe and John and Bob and so on, um, and run a script. But the problem is, as soon as you click submit, and assuming you've done this correctly, um, you would restart and you would start from scratch. So if you run any long running code that, you know, uh, goes through a list or increments, you cannot carry that data from one web page to the next through a refresh and, you know, keep those running. Now, traditionally, if I was trying to do that, what I would use is a um, is uh, an automator. So um, uh, a testing kit. So uh, I'm just trying to think of the name right now. Um, Chrome Automatic Tester. Let's call this Selenium. Okay. Uh, there are a couple different alternatives, but Selenium will uh, allow you to write Python code using Python in the background, and it will launch a web browser, go to a web page, do certain things. So you would keep 
your variables, let's say the list of all my family's names, um, as Python code, and then it would launch up a browser, then uh, go into the form and type out you know, a certain amount of information with JavaScript code, and then you would revert back to Python and say, go to the next web page or refresh a page. Um, you don't get that with console because as soon as you refresh, as soon as you reload, as soon as you submit a form uh, and it directs you to another web page, whatever's in your console is gone. So that is really frustrating. What I wanted to show you very quickly is Tamper Monkey. Uh, this is a uh, user script manager um, that allows you to run JavaScript code as well, I think. Uh, I have used it long, long ago, but I can't really remember what I'm supposed to do with it. But let's come over here and um, yeah, you, I, I think the idea is you can go to various web pages and keep it running. And this looks like JavaScript to me. And this is what we're going to be playing around with very quickly, is whether we can uh, fill out a form, um, submit it, and then move on to the next name and fill out the form again. Uh, the real problem here, and I want to make this very clear, uh, there are lots of technologies blocking you from doing things like that. So Samsung has a very basic verification code. Um, this is purely uh, kind of an e explainer of how these different tools are used. So if you want to use console, you're very much limited to the current page you are looking at right now and there. Tamper Monkey gives you the ability to kind of go through a couple different pages, but generally it's still quite restrictive. And then Selenium automates your browser entirely. You can open new browsers, open new windows, go to different tabs, um, gives you a lot more flexibility. So I'm going to get off uh, talking. I'm going to try and figure out how to use Tamper Monkey, and then um, we'll see where we go. Okay, so uh, after a few quick minutes, uh, we have this. And the important part here is the GM get value and set value in which we granted uh, a permission. Um, what this is, is that when you run Tamper Monkey, and I'm going to just comment these out and save, um, and we'll refresh and give you a demo here. Uh, this is not. There we go. Okay, so zero, one, two, three. It's just refreshing the page over and over. And every time you can see the entire contents are cleared off in the console. And similarly, Tamper Monkey gets cleared off. So uh, you can't just have a long running function apparently throughout multiple refreshes. But what you can do is save some of the values within uh, tamper monkey. So in this case, we have uh, basically a global variable that we are setting and getting between each time. So when we run this function, it runs right at the start. Um, when you refresh a page, it's going to get the global value or get zero if you don't have one yet, and it's going to get the value for counter, and you might name it whatever you want. Um, then it's going to set a new variable. So it's going to set a new value to that global variable. So we're just adding one to it, so there's an increment. Um, but you can do all sorts of different things. You can store names, lists, um, strings, whatever you want in here as your global uh, variable. And what's important is you can then carry it across multiple pages. Here, we just log the thing and then we reload the page, uh, really just finishing out this demo so that we get up to five. And in this case, you know, in between, 
in theory, you're wiping it clean every time. You you have no counter because it gets wiped out. But with this global variable, you can have the count and say, I only want to refresh five times. If without Camper Monkey, I don't know how you're supposed to do that without some sort of external tracker because every time uh, your console gets wiped. So I don't think you can achieve the same results um, here with the browser console. So a uh, quick recap, we have um, a couple different solutions. If you want to automate, you can just do a quick console. You are very much limited to what's on the page. Tamper Monkey gives you uh, a global variable so that you can um, save just a handful of data between refreshes. And finally, you want something like Selenium if you want to really add new tabs, go to different pages, do a whole lot of things that uh, is more like a regular real person user. Um, I hope that was helpful. It was a bit rambly because um, this didn't work out as exactly as I planned. Um, but still, uh, very useful to know because Tamper Monkey is going straight into my tool belt for some of these very basic um, automation tasks that I have. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys very soon.